to another episode of Hard Lessons with Demel Hanna. I am your host, Demel Hanna. Uh, on December 20th, 1997, my life changed. Me and who I considered at the time a friend. We were standing on uh, 69th at the Dan Ryan in Chicago, Illinois. Uh, you know, I played this. Sh I played this shit in my head for 18 years. This particular day. Uh, you know, what did I do wrong? You know. Uh, I got on the bus. I got on the bus. If I don't look at the camera, that's because I'm thinking. You know, I'm, I'm, I, I don't, I don't disseminate lies. I don't. You know, my life isn't a lie. I can't even tell a lie about my life. There's no reason to tell a lie. My life has been fun, exciting, and tragically twisted. But you know. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking when, when I look up or I look at, I, I'm thinking, you know, so I can give you the, the accurate and vivid details of how things unfolded. But December 20th was a friend of mine. That was his birthday. So uh, my mind state was I was going to go to the block and, uh, you know, drink, smoke, whatever we do on our birthdays and, you know, bring his in. He was turning 17. I was 17. I was turning 18 two days later. Uh, so I got on the bus. But when I got on the bus, I could see off the bus inside of the terminal. And I seen some people that was unfamiliar corralled around the guy that I was with. You know, uh, so I got off the damn bus. That's that loyalty that I always had, particularly for guys that that grew up with me, uh, you know, was aligned with me. I had some type of association with. I, I you know, I didn't leave my friends. I, I didn't. I didn't leave my friends, man, especially when they was in adversity. <sighs> I got off the bus, man. My life changed forever. Uh, I got off the bus and you know, walking into the terminal, I'm like, what's up? You know what I mean? What the fuck y'all around him for? And it was a guy, he had a he had a hammer in his hand. He asked the girl, is he with him too? And the girl was like, yeah. I'm like, I was confused because I'm like, why is he asking her that and why is she pointing me out? Like I did something. So when she said, yeah, the police was like, cuff him too. Because I'm looking at the guy with the hammer. I'm telling the guy with the hammer, man, put that hammer down, bitch. You know, that's, what, that's, what, that's how I was. I'm like, man, put that motherfucking hammer down, bitch. Because I know he ain't the police. Police don't hold hammers. Well, they hold hammers, but not that type of hammer. You know, so I'm like, man, put the gun, put that, put that hammer down, bitch. And when I say that, the police like cuff him. So uh, they cuff me. They get us in the car, me and this guy. So as I'm in the back of the car, now I want to know why the fuck I was cuffed. So I'm like, man, why the fuck y'all cuff me, man? So, you know, one of the officers like, your boy was, you know, talking about robbing the girl. And I looked at him because that's what he was known for doing, robbing motherfuckers. And I looked at him and I said, man, you ain't say that shit, did you? You know, in and, and a low voice that the, that the narcs couldn't hit me, I said, you, 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 you didn't tell her that shit, did you? And he like, no. And I'm like, this nigga lying like a motherfucker, man. I knew he was lying. I know this motherfucker. 
You know what I'm saying? I know, I know he, I know he lying like a motherfucker, man. I'm like, damn, man, this goofy ass dude, man, he's stupid as fuck, man. So they take us to the station on 71st and Cottage Grove. Uh, they got us in the same bullpen. Uh, they separate us for whatever reasons. I find out he wanted to talk to the narcs. They take me to 51st. They hold me in 51st for hours and hours and hours and hours. Uh, from 51st back to 71st, they asked me what I was being. They, I, I was, I was, I was tortured all night. But I'm, I'm, I'm not even going to get into that. I'm just going to tell y'all my life. I was tortured all night, though. All night. That's what they did, man. They either beat your ass. You know what I mean? They choke your ass. They had some shit. Y'all can Google this. Uh, certain stations had electric boxes where they would, uh, uh, they would, they would literally put these things to your genitalia and electrocute your ass. This is a known fact. This ain't no joke. This ain't no lie. This is what they did in the 80s and 90s to guys particularly black and brown men out of Chicago, man. Whatever they had to do to get you to say you did something you didn't do, they would do it. And that's what happened in my case. Uh, they take me from 51st and Wentworth, uh, which was Homicide Division, back to 71st. The gentleman asked me what I was being charged with. I assumed robbery. He said, you being charged with homicide. I couldn't believe it. I went back to 71st, sat in the cell. I'm fucking distraught. You, you know, cause I ain't never, I'm a street, I'm a street guy. I didn't been through interrogation. I didn't been in these stations. I ain't never been to the Audi home. I ain't never been to Cook County. Uh, so they give me a call. I call my mother. I tell my mother they charging me with homicide. She devastated. She distraught. Why? I tell her I don't know. They charging me with homicide, man. You know what I mean? So they transported me to Cook County December 21st, late December 21st, 1997. Uh, you, you know, how, how you used to arrive in the county was through this garage, you know, through the garage and y'all would walk up the stairs and shit. Uh, so when we walked up the stairs, it was like an open area, kind of an open area. Uh, it was about 30, 40 of us. So the officers, you know, you know, they giving you the routine and all that shit. I don't even, I don't even remember what the fuck they said. I don't, I don't even remember. But uh, what I do remember is they told all of us, <coughs> excuse me, they told all of us to take our coats off. And, uh, when we took our coats off, they told us throw them in the pile. So they didn't even check the coats. It ain't like they went through every pocket. You know, they just like they picked the coats up, sh sh shook them and put them down, and then said, "Y'all got ten seconds to get y'all coat. If you don't get your coat in ten seconds, uh, you ain't gonna get it." Now, I wish I knew. That I wasn't getting out of prison. I wouldn't have been out with jail. I wouldn't have been trying to get that fucking coat. After what the fuck I seen. They gave me. And they ain't even count like one, two. Man, they counted like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And, you know, guys trying to grab their coat and shit, man. You know, if you didn't grab your coat within that time frame, man, they were beating your ass, man. Man, they beating motherfuckers' ass, man. Little, I'm not bullshitting you, man. They fucking guys up. And I'm like, what the fuck? Over they coat? But this is the introduction to the county. So I'm like, damn, man, this shit, this shit is crazy. You know what I mean? So from there, you go to the, uh, as I talked about it, the dick doctor, see the doctors and all that shit. You know what I mean? And the dick doctor was... They say, you know, guys say they shot something up your penis. We call them the dick doctor. We ain't call them the penis doctor. We call them the dick doctor. 
They say it was something that they shot up your penis. All I know is it was a needle that they injected inside of your damn, uh, 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 that cavity hole. And that shit hurt. I don't know what the hell they shot up in us, but that shit hurts. You know what I mean? I had heard about it because my brother and them had been through the county. That shit hurts. So they shot that shit up, whatever. You know, they did shots or whatever. And then they told me where I was going. They like, you going to Division 11, Supermax. You know, me never being in the county, I wanted to know why the fuck they was putting me in Supermax. You know what I mean? I'm like, why the fuck is I'm going over there? They like, man, you meet the qualifications. I'm like, damn, man. So, I think I either turned 18 when I was going through processing or I turned 18 when I stepped on the deck. I don't know. I don't fucking remember. But I was... December 22nd, 1997, I was, I was celebrating my 18th birthday in the county jail. Uh, but before I went to Division 11, you know, we had to wait in a line. It was a long line. It's a tunnel. A lot of guys in Cook County they know about this tunnel because a lot of people have been murdered in this tunnel. Motherfuckers have been raped in the tunnel. Motherfuckers have been beat up in the tunnel. This tunnel was famous, man. It's a long tunnel, Joe. You don't want to walk through that. If you a bitch ass dude, you ain't walking through that tunnel by yourself. You be trying to find your guys and shit to walk through that tunnel because you might not make it out that bitch. But anyway, they had us in that tunnel lined up and a, and a white dude, an officer, smacked the fuck out of me. Seriously. I had never been even beat up by a white person. I went to school with whites between, and I, I ain't, I, I'm not making, I'm, I'm just telling you, I'm a black dude from Chicago. You know what I'm saying? And grew up in the heart of the heart. You know, uh, I didn't fault white guys. I, 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 I was best friends with white guy. I had never been treated by a white person like this ever before. This dude smacked me so, he smacked me so hard, man. You know what I mean? For no reason. I'm like, man, you know, I asked him. I said, what the fuck you smacked me for? He said, man, what you gonna do about it? Now, I just come from the streets, man. Fucking guys up, man. Beating motherfuckers up, shooting at motherfuckers, doing all type of shit. This motherfucker smacked me, man. I'm like, man. I'm like, damn, man, what the fuck? You know what I mean? I'm like, man, what the fuck? What type of shit is this, man? But, uh, whatever, man. They transported me to uh, Division 11 by way of a van. Mike was a bus. I don't fucking remember that part. But I come up in that motherfucker, and, uh, you know, when I hit Division 11, I had heard about Division 11. I remember when they first opened that motherfucker. Late 95, it was supposed to be a penitentiary. You know what I mean? It was supposed to be the first penitentiary in the city of Chicago, but they just turned it into another division. Because Chicago got... The Cook County guy, I don't even know. Back then, it had, I think it went up to 11. I think 11 was the last one. But now that motherfucker got so many damn divisions and shit. But anyway, so they sent me to BJ. And that's why, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, I ain't going to lie. I, 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 I ain't, no, ain't no lies go be a part of my, my story. So anybody that know Wax, they go get up on here and be like, dude, ain't lying. I promise you. But when I come up in BJ, back in the day, as soon as you come through that door, you hit us, you you hear it, you hear it. GD, Vice Lord, Blackstone, BD, Latin King, Latin folk, you hear it. You hear it. If you don't, if you do not 
acknowledge what you are hearing. Soon as you walk through that door, ain't no coming the next day time out. You this and this. You better say it soon as you walk through that door. I knew that without knowing that. So when I heard what I heard, when I heard my men, you know, I threw them up. Where y'all at? And one of the homies from my hood, he called me one of the other homies, but he thought that was my brother. He was trying to call me. He, he was trying to call. He recognized me. He knew me. He was off 72nd. I was off 73rd and Ada. He was off 72nd and Ada. So when he was like, hey, woo, woo. I knew that was a familiar person because he was calling me by a familiar name. He thought that guy he was calling me was my brother, but that wasn't my brother. So I'm like, who was that? So he said his name. So I'm like, oh, shit. So, you know, this jail. So I ran up. I'm like, where you at? He told me I'm in room. Woo, woo. So I get up there. I'm like, damn, what up? What up, G? You know, so he like, uh, man, what up? What they got you for? I'm like, man, a body. He like, damn. I'm like, man, they got you for that body? He like, yeah, Joe. Because I knew he had been on the run for a little while. So he like, what cell you going in and shit? That's how it is. So I think I went in, uh, I think I went in 310. Because it was 24 cells. It went to 12. It was uh, four up top and three on the bottom. I think I went in 310. But when I went in the cell, first thing you do is ask bunky, cellmate, whatever, what you is. That's like, that's like, you know, it's, it's just real game culture where we come from. You know what I'm saying? It's real, especially back then in the 90s, because you want to know who the fuck you sleeping with. You know, you were just shooting at guys. You don't know if these his motherfucking friends. So I think he asked me, like, what you is? I told him. I asked him. He told me. So we are aware that we on the opposite sides of the fence. We are aware within that five second exchange, we on the opposite sides of the fence. So, I can't show no motherfucking signs of weakness. Showing a sign of weakness when you come in the cell is making your bed up immediately. Sitting down either on a seat or on the bed immediately. Uh, talking or asking too many questions. So, Without me even having uh, experience in jail, I was just a, I was a real street guy and I had big brothers. So I knew do, do, it's certain things you do not do. You move off that person's movement. So I did not, I threw that, sh I probably threw the fucking blanket on the, on, on the top bunk because I think he was on the bottom. I stood by the door. I leaned by that motherfucker. Like I was looking out. Like it's 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 like a a a a a chuck hole, top chuck hole with look look holes you can look out of. So I was looking out that motherfucker like I was looking out a window and I'm listening to him. Just letting just just putting that energy out there that I ain't scared, man. I ain't scared, Joe. Whatever it's going to be, it's going to be, but I ain't scared. But uh, I think he sensed that. You know, uh, I don't even know when the fuck I went to sleep that night or if I did. I, I, I don't know. I don't know, but December 20th, you know what I mean? My life changed forever, forever. You know what I mean? And December 22nd, 1997, that's when uh, I was introduced to a new world 
for real.